Hey everybody, welcome back to the boat shop. Um, thought we'd uh, catch up a little bit on what's happening with our gas boat build. I've had a number of guys ask if I would um, video some of the steps along the way for the process, so we're going to do that now. Um, it's evening and uh, the boat shop dog is uh, tired of me working out in the shop and wants me to come in the house, so I don't know if I can get through this. He's outside complaining, but let's try. What you're looking at here is the framed up center section for the gas boat uh, with a few toys in the way just for video effect. Okay, let's get our bicycles and pull these along, right? <laughs> We're just big kids. Um, and so uh, this is a dry run, uh, one of several, but uh, it's for real now because I'm about to slap down a whole bunch of epoxy and uh, try to make this thing solid. So what I wanted to do was do kind of a final test fit, make sure all of the pieces fit all the way down into place, figure out where I need to weight it to get it sitting nice and flat because we want this floor just dead nuts flat because everything else we do is going to be based on the angles and the positions of this floor. So it's got to be good. It's got to be perfect. We're already doing it. Might as well do it right. Uh, so this is a great use for old uh, 2.5 Ford connecting rods. They make really good weights. Um, so do uh, some header sections. Actually, this is my favorite tool for uh, epoxy because, you know, you don't want to wait forever for the epoxy to come draining down. So when I'm getting ready to get after it with the epoxy, that holds my G-Flex, right? Uh, so anyway, uh, what I've done is I've weighted it all. I've got everything positioned where it all fits nice and it works. You can't see it right now. You will in a minute, but there are some lines drawn on here with pencil uh, to show me where the rails go. I figured out how to make them nice and straight, get them in the right spot. Uh, once we glue that down, our, uh, we'll start putting our uh, sponson components on. We don't assemble this like this and then put it on because we're, as we go and attach these pieces one at a time, we're going to be measuring heights and setting angles and all that. So don't, don't ever assemble this as a unit and then think you're going to go slap it on and have your boat nice and straight because it won't be. I can still hear that dog out there complaining. So, all right, so here's what we got, and uh, let's see. Well, let's pull it off of there, and I'll show you how it looks. Step one, as it were. I do my uh, transom in a uh, kind of a two-piece format. I stole this idea from uh, ML Boatworks because this is the way theirs is done. Uh, it's all solid when they get it, but I cut it out on the sides to make it lighter. Um, and I like it done this way because when, I, uh, when I'm going to put my rails on here, sorry, got it out of view. This is really hard to do one-handed. But, you know, this is going to be my rail that runs along my engine well here to glue my deck to and offer support. Uh, but it hits the end here, and then I have my second piece on the back, and you don't see it exposed. So it makes for a really nice looking solid transom, and you're not trying to fill in some holes and stuff uh, where you've notched it for all your, uh, your stringers. Um, I'm still going to change a few things. I kind of built this thing, uh, designed it, that is. Uh, just scaled up from an 8th scale. Um, I've built nothing but 8th scales before. Uh, and in my 8 scales, I use a lot of 8th inch uh, stringers because they're really, really lightweight and really, really small, and I don't really care. Uh, this thing with the gas boat, uh, the motor's big, it's heavy, uh, shakes a lot, a lot more torque and does crazy things. Uh, and I'm going to recut these, so instead of running 8th inch here on the outside where it's really, really flexible, uh, I want this whole center tub section to be... Uh, uh, torsionally solid, you know, so it doesn't twist and move around. So I'm going to go ahead and, and recut it and put some quarter uh, out here. Uh, I think that'll help make it really, really solid. Uh, I'm not too worried about the front. Uh, this is a bizarre boat where it has a really, really deep pickle fork depth, uh, but it also has a spar. And it'll be a very, very solidly mounted spar. 
Uh, I have a very solid uh, arrangement that I'm going to use for the bull nose. And then even down here, there's a solid piece that will run across the bottom. Uh, so I believe that it'll be uh, a really stout, even though I, I did build it with a really, really wide engine well. Uh, I think I'm going to get away with it. More on that later. Okay, let's get this apart really quick and just try to briefly show you how the initial portions go down. Did I do that right? What's the best way to pick this up with one hand from the end? How about that? Don't know what's going to happen. Uh, let's go over here. So this, if you watched my last video, if you haven't, go back and watch it on how to construct a jig. I talked about how we're going to mount the uh, floor section. Uh, as you can see, I just run a bunch of screws in it. Some big washers. You just want to snug them just till you feel the washer gets snug. You don't want to go in there and crank real hard because then you'll create a divot in it. So these are just seated. Made the back of my jig beautifully square using a very large square. How about that? And measured my center. This guy's dead nut centered, beautifully straight. And then I've marked where my engine well rails go. Mark on the outside of the rail, by the way. If you mark on the inside, you'll see it later if you're going to leave just a wood finished interior. And it's got to look cool, so you don't want a bunch of pencil marks and stuff showing in there. Uh, so that's all there is to that. Uh, binder clips. Go buy some binder clips. I'll have probably 75 of these things on here at any given time when I'm mounting all of those rails along all of my center section pieces. I've done part of that already. These eighth inch stringers run the length of the center and they have an eighth inch piece reinforcing them. So it gives me a quarter inch worth of width for good gluing and strength. And I've done the same out here. These are 16th. And then the non-trip, it'll actually be outside of it here. Okay, we're looking at the transom here. You can kind of see the configuration of the non-trip. All right. Uh, one thing that I, an idea I stole from David Brandt. See, some guys tell me that I, I'm really good at this stuff. No, I'm just really good at stealing ideas. Uh, this is something I didn't know. I really hadn't figured out how to do it. I was going to draw designs on the wood, and that sounds like a lot of fun, doesn't it? No. You get plans or uh, make your own plans. Uh, I've drawn these up myself and uh, copied from some other pieces that I'd made. Um, and uh, quick and easy, grab some wax paper. If you're married, you'll find this in one of the kitchen cabinets. Trust me. And your wife will keep you stocked on that. She'll wonder, why am I always running out of wax paper? A little bit of spray glue. Nothing to it. You're going to mist it real light. Not much. Slap it down on your wood. You're good to go, man. Head over to your bandsaw. If you, just get you a cheapy uh, bandsaw at Sears or Craigslist or whatever works great. Uh, rough that baby out and finish up, do a little sanding, whatever you got to do. It's really, really easy. And now you've got this thing stuck on there with a bunch of glue and stuff. Uh, the super hot ticket for removing that. I glued this one on this morning. I was going to shoot this this morning, then I got busy doing stuff. So it's been on there a long time. Uh, the sooner you get it off, the better. Uh, but acetone is the hot ticket. And let's see if we can do this one-handed. This is all craziness. Uh, real easy with two hands because you kind of soak it on one side while you're lifting the other. But you will find that the acetone makes this glue just let go like it's nothing. Now we're kind of stuck because I didn't do it here. But if you know what I mean, when you're using two hands, it just comes right off and it pulls that glue right up. And I recommend you do this after you cut your piece out, but I didn't need to make these pieces, that's already done. So just wanted to show you that real quick, uh, super fast and easy. A little bit of spray glue, slap it on there, do all your cutting, whatever, your slots, everything. You can cut the paper, so these have already been used, and I cut this afterwards without having a pattern, uh, and then undid it. So she's stuck now, boy. With a little bit of acetone, zip it right off of there. Go to Home Depot and get tons of that. K 
Okay, so that's about all I got for you right now. Um, if you oh, by the way, if you don't have a, uh, this is another super cool deal. If you don't have a, a bandsaw and you're too cheap to go buy one, go down to Home Depot also or wherever you get your stuff. Uh, get one of these little diamond uh, tip cutters for your Dremel in an angle attachment. And man, it'll just fly right along like nobody's business. And you'll cut a big old long groove in your table and regret it. So don't do that. Uh, for that, grab a piece of your blue foam. You can see I cut the center section on here. And your blue foam becomes your, uh, your cutting base. Throw it down on there, slap your wood on here, and then just cut right along. That way you're not suspending the wood off the end trying to cut it and having pieces fall off and everything. So just kind of a tidy way of doing that. All right, so I told you I'd video it. I'm videoing it. Next step is gonna to be to epoxy. And uh, I might even shoot a little video on how I do that. I'm super duper anal about it. You can build boats uh, many, many ways. Uh, I build it because I want it to last for a really, really long time because I'm lazy. I don't want to build another boat. So I want to make it strong. I want to make it sealed. I want to make it work for a long, long time. So I have kind of my own little anal process for uh, uh, gluing that uh, you got to be super patient and super anal and a little bit weird, but it works really, really good. So that video is coming up later. All right, stop watching videos, go out into your shop and build something. It's almost time to go racing.